Okay, so this is lecture 21. It's uh, one more lecture on the subject of uh, linear programs and semi-definite programs for constraint satisfaction problems and other optimization problems, but it's gonna also mix together with another topic in uh, computer science theory, namely proof complexity and proof systems. So, uh, a good resource for this topic is a really long uh, monograph, it's about 100 pages, by Fleming, Kotari, and Patasi called Semi-Algebraic Proofs in Efficient Algorithm Design. It just came out about six months ago. And uh, this is Professor uh, Pravesh Kotari, who will in fact be teaching a course all about the sum of squares proof hierarchy system and the topics we're gonna talk about today, next semester. So do check that out if you're interested. Okay, so we're going to be talking uh, once more about this um, paradigm of trying to use, let's say, linear programs to uh, linear programming to solve some uh, hard maximization or optimization problems. So uh, remember this uh, paradigm that is very popular algorithmically that we set up. You start with like an instance of a hard maximization problem, and you um, sort of exactly express it by an integer linear program, a linear program where you have an extra constraint that the variables are supposed to be integers, let's say specifically zero and one. And this part is exact, you haven't lost anything yet. Of course, solving you a zero one integer linear programs is NP hard. So the point is that you um, relax this integer linear program to just a linear program where the variables can be any real numbers now. And so it no longer exactly captures the problem, but hopefully it's reasonably close. The point is that you can solve this uh, linear program in polynomial time, which is great. You'll get some number LP opt. Let's assume it's a maximization problem. And a good thing is that this number, LP opt, is guaranteed to be an upper bound on the true opt. I mean, ideally, it'll be maybe close to the true opt, but at least it's guaranteed to be an upper bound on the true optimum. And uh, if you're not sort of just satisfied by the algorithm spitting out a number and saying, like, I promise you this is an upper bound on the true optimum, another thing you can do is you can solve and set up and solve the dual linear program, which we talked about in the first lecture. And uh, the dual linear program uh, basically the way it works is it finds some multipliers, lambda one through lambda m, that are non-negative and uh, with the property that when you multiply the LP constraints by these lambdas, you uh, um, get a new inequality, which is of the form, you know, objective function that you're trying to maximize is less than some number. And we know that uh, this LP dual tries to minimize this number and uh, LP duality tells us that it'll uh, actually achieve the optimum of the original program. So in other words, these like lambdas will be like a very vivid proof, if you will, um, that the linear program's value is at most LP op, and therefore like a very vivid proof that the upper bound of your optimization, an upper bound for your optimization problem is this number LP op. Good, so uh, I wanna start, um, thinking about this a uh, bit less in terms of like a linear program and more in terms of like a proof system. So I wanna talk uh, basically in this lecture about proof systems for efficiently bounding the, the optimum of like an integer linear program with the hope that maybe we can find um, other proof systems that we can work with efficiently that come up with hopefully even better upper bounds for uh, our integer linear programs. So let's do an example. Uh, it's the max independent set problem, which is basically the same as the min vertex cover problem, except uh, you subtract one, uh, the answer from n. Uh, so in the max independent set problem, you're given a graph. And uh, what is the task? You're trying to find a subset S of the vertices. And an independent set is one where there are no edges with both endpoints in S. Okay, so you're trying to find a uh, and it's a maximization problem. So you're trying to find a larger subset of vertices as possible, S, such that it still has no uh, edges inside it. Okay, so in this very simple example, the optimum is, oh boy, I've already got a mistake here. The optimum is one, not two. Uh, because if you try to take any two vertices in this graph, then you'll have an edge between them. Okay, so the largest independent set you could take, and you can take any of the three uh, vertices, would be to take, um, Oh, any of the three vertices, and you get one, and it has no edges inside it. Okay, great. So first uh, in this paradigm, we write down this exact integer linear program for it, and there we usually introduce a variable, you know, xi for each vertex i. Okay, in this little example, there's only three um, vertices. 
And um, in the integer linear program, these are zero one variables, and meaning they're supposed to take values that are zero or one. And the intent is that like x sub v is uh, supposed to indicate whether the variable v is in the independent set that you're taking. Uh, now your instance actually defines a bunch of constraints. So in um, you know, the maximum independent set problem, the constraints, you have a constraint for each edge, and the constraint is that like you better not choose both endpoints of this edge. Okay, so for this edge here between A and B, we get this constraint, which effectively says xA plus xB is at most one. It effectively says that you can take at most one of uh, vertex A or vertex B. And this uh, edge here gives you this constraint, and the last edge here gives you this constraint. Okay, so in all in all, the, the edges give us these constraints. And oh, let me just say that the, uh, the task is to maximize the sum of the xi's. Okay, so that exactly captures this uh, max independent set problem. Any zero one solution that satisfies all the constraints will be an independent set. And in the, you know, this paradigm of relaxing to a linear program, what we'll eventually do is relax this assumption that the uh, x variables are exactly zero and one. Now, if you set this up as a linear program, um, you can look at the, as I said, the dual linear program. And again, the dual will try to find a linear combination, a non-negative linear combination of the constraints, which equals to, you know, objective is at most something. And in this case, uh, the thing to do is to take half times each of the three constraints. And if you do that, you know, so every variables appearing in two constraints, you'll exactly get xA plus xB plus xC is at most three halves. Okay, and this xA plus xB plus xC is the objective function. It's what you're trying to maximize. Okay, and so this, uh, you know, these multipliers, this dual solution, if you will, are like a vivid proof that the independent, the max independent size, set size is at most three halves. Of course, it's actually at most one, it's, but um, well, that's why it's a relaxation. It doesn't always give you the optimum, the true integer optimum. I should mention, as always, if you have any questions while I'm going, um, can pipe up or type them into the chat. I'll keep an eye on that and answer them as they come in. Okay, so this is sort of the linear programming and dual linear programming uh, way of formalizing it. But now I wanna just change our language a little bit and talk about this more like a proof system. So I'm not gonna change things per se, I'm just gonna rename them. So um, just for clarity, I'm just gonna start calling the variables indeterminate instead of variable, more or less the same thing. Um, and I'm going to call these sort of given constraint inequalities, I'm going to start calling them axioms because they're like, you know, facts that are given to us, like xA plus xB should be at most one. And in this dual solution where I've sort of combined these axioms to derive like a conclusion, I'm going to call this uh, an inference rule or a derivation rule. Okay, so let me uh, just uh, say this a bit more clearly. Um, in this, you know, sort of proof system based on linear programming, we're gonna have some indeterminates, one for each variable uh, vertex that are supposed to be representing zero, one values. And um, we're gonna have something called proof lines. So, you know, when you write a mathematical proof, you know, stylistically, you write down a bunch of lines and each one follows from previous lines according to some rules. And hopefully the last line, maybe the first lines are some axioms and the last lines are your conclusion that you've drawn from these axioms. And in this sort of proof system based on linear programming, the lines, every line will be a linear inequality. And our proof system is gonna have an inference rule. And that inference rule is that you can derive from previously achieved inequalities or lines, um, non-negative linear combinations of these lines. Okay, so you can add a couple of previous lines and get a new inequality. You can multiply a previous inequality that you've got by a positive number. You can add up several previous lines. And this allows you to derive more and more lines, inequalities, which are consequences of the axioms you start with. And at the end, you're trying to you know, derive a line that helps you bound, in this case, xA plus xB plus xC. Um, so we can throw in these axioms too. I didn't mention them before, but all these variables can be bounded uh, by zero and one. So this is like six axioms that you would always, you could always put in if you were, um, you know, working with a proof system where the variables are supposed to represent zero and one. But uh, given an instance of like a problem like this, uh, 
um, max independent set problem. Uh, the instance divides some like you know additional axioms, as I mentioned. These three axioms corresponding to the three edges. Okay, and the goal is to derive from these axioms according to these inference rules uh, an inequality that looks like this: x a plus x b plus x c, which represents the objective function here, uh, is at most some beta for a beta as small as you can make it. Okay, so one thing you could do is you know take the three axioms: x a is at most one, x b is at most one, x c is at most one and add them all up and deduce that xa plus xb plus xc is at most three. But as we saw, there was a, a better thing to do uh, using the instance axioms that gave you um, one and a half. Okay, so I'll call this proof system the uh, linear programming proof system. It's not really different from linear programming duality, but you know, it's uh, phrasing it more in terms of like a proof system. Okay. So in this proof system, just to repeat it, you know, we would have these lines that are our axioms, and our proof took this, you know, uh, linear combination of previously derived lines. Well, axioms count as derived. Oops, we have a little typo here. This should parenthesis should go there, and uh, we derive from them uh, this line, which, when you add up, gives you this objective bound. Now, uh, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about taking this proof system and making like a sort of more powerful proof system that lets you, that gives you like more kinds of uh, maybe derivation rules and more complicated lines, which will let us um, get better proofs on things. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to mention um, a different proof system that you could introduce at this moment, which is studied in proof complexity. It's called the cutting planes proof system. And it takes this proof system and adds a new inference rule. And this new inference rule is, you know, whenever you have a linear inequality, if your left-hand side coefficients are all integers, and your right-hand side number is not an integer, then you're eligible to round it down. You're allowed to round it down to the nearest integer. Okay, so you would take this, and I would derive from this the same thing, but with less than or equal to uh, 1. Okay, and then actually that is the optimum solution. And this is like a sound rule, as I say, it's, it's legal because, um, you know, xa, xb, xc are supposed to stand for integers. So like, if you have an integer linear combination of them, you'll get an integer. So you could always write round down the right-hand side. So it's a very interesting uh, proof system to study, but we're not gonna study it in this lecture. Uh, we're gonna study different kinds of proof systems today. But I thought it was a good opportunity to mention this cutting planes one.